Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I know it's kind of weird to be saying it January 12th, right? But I think it's still an important time. <laughs> so uh, the January 12th Executive Committee meeting is called to order. First, I'd like to ask our interpreters to explain how to uh, access interpretation. So please go ahead. Yes, good morning. To use the interpretation feature, please scroll to the bottom of the Zoom screen where the meeting controls are interpretation icon, the world, and select English as your language. If you're joining through the Zoom mobile app, a cell phone, tablet, etc., please press the ellipsis, then interpretation, and then choose your language. Finally, click on mute original audio to not hear the original Spanish low in the background. Headsets are available for interpretation. If you are in the meeting room, please check out a headset from the receptionist in the lobby. Buenos días. Para hacer uso del servicio de interpretación, por favor desplazarse a la parte inferior de la pantalla de Zoom donde aparecen los controles. Haga clic en el icono de interpretación en el globo terráqueo y seleccione español. Si está utilizando un, una aplicación de la aplicación móvil de Zoom desde su celular, tableta, etc., presione los puntos suspensivos, luego interpretación y luego el idioma. Si no desea escuchar el audio original en inglés en el fondo, por favor seleccione silenciar audio original. Contamos con auriculares disponibles para el servicio de interpretación. Si se encuentra en la sala de la reunión, por favor, pedir auriculares con la recepcionista en el vestíbulo. Gracias. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, start with, with our tribal acknowledgement. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the land that we call home. The tribal nations of the San Diego region have historically faced injustices. We acknowledge the harmony that existed between the land, nature, and its original peoples who have since endured displacement, persecution, and systemic oppression. Mm -hmm. We pay our respect to the unceded territory and homelands of the 18 tribal nations in our region and the most in any county in the United States from cultural groups, the Cumia, the Luiseño, the Cupeño, and the Cobia. This land has nourished um, Hit it, protected, and embrace them for many generations, uh, healed, I'm sorry, many generations of relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the Santa community, we acknowledge this legacy. We aspire to learn from indigenous traditional knowledge and experiences in undoing the injustices of the past. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right. Could you please confirm quorum, uh, Tessa? Thank you. Good morning. Yes, we have a quorum with all six jurisdictions present. Thank you. Uh, now, before we proceed to uh, non-agenda comments, I'd like to remind everyone in the room today that this meeting will be conducted in an orderly manner to ensure that the public has an opportunity to be heard and that the members' discussions and deliberations are not disrupted. We wanna hear from every person who has comments on the subject today's meetings. Um, and so I ask that you please remain on topic. No comments should be using uh, loud, threatening, profane, or abusive language that disrupts the orderly conduct of the meeting. Uh, it will not be tolerated. Any such language or any other disorderly conduct that disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the committee meeting is prohibited. Based on those factors for today's meeting, each member of the public will be uh, allowed a minute for each of the comments. Also, a reminder to my colleagues, uh, we do not use the voting pads for executive committees, so please just go ahead and raise your hand or wave at me and I'll make sure that you um, have time to speak. With that, we're gonna go ahead with today's uh, meeting with non-agenda public comments. This is for public and member non-agenda comments as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tessa. Thank you. I would like to remind the public, we take the first five public commenters at this time. That would be Michael Brando, Mark, Alan C, Blair B, and the original draw. Michael Brando, please come to the podium. Five four nine five four point three C. You can criticize omissions as well as the policies. The omissions is defined as the action of excluding or leaving out someone or something, a failure to do something, especially something that one has a moral or legal obligation to do, according to the Oxford Dictionary. So some of the people that you were admonishing this morning, Nora, they have a right to mention omissions that you may not consider relevant, but they do. At Tuesday's County Board of Supervisors meeting, the same chairwoman interrupted people repeatedly, telling them they were either off topic or for some other reason. 
what Mark just said in that recording addresses omissions. I've seen it happen here. I've seen it happen at the county. I've seen it happen at City of San Diego with Ela Rivera, people being interrupted, not allowing to bring up omissions, things that aren't being talked about that are interrelated with the topic. So please do your best to stop violating the Brown Act and the First Amendment. Mark, please come to the podium. You will be followed by Ellen C. Mark, um, Nora just conflicted and none of you on the board corrected her just now. She literally said, don't be off topic during non-agenda. Just uh, uh, two minutes ago, literally. Now, first of all, 54954.3C of the Brown Act states that we have the right not only to critique your policies, programs, and uh, procedures, but also your omissions. Now, omissions means that you did not think of it, but we think you should have. Now, my uh, the omissions that I uh, usually um, comment on are directly related, and just about everybody's I've ever seen our meetings are that Nora has uh, literally stopped people, uh, prohibited their speech, even though it was directly related. However, even if a, an omission was not directly related, a a citizen has the right to comment and say what they think is an omission, not what you think. That's why it's an omission. Stop doing it. It's a Brown Act violation. Your time expired. Our next commenter, Ellen C., please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Blair B. Good morning, board. Ellen C. Nora, you placed another nation over America. The very first thing this board should be doing is a pledge of allegiance to our country. And while we're talking about the Kuma Indians, talk about hypocrisy. You, you praise the Kuma Indians every presentation. It's all fluff plastic. You won't give the land back. So, of course, you can't give the land back, but it's a slap in the face. I'm part Indian. I'm you. And every time I hear you talk about that, it's literally a slap in my face because my land was taken away, too. So knock that nonsense off and start looking about things like that. You're putting forth a new half cent sales tax this November. You have to transit sales tax, which you promised freeways that didn't happen. That doesn't expire to 2044. Now you're going to burden the taxpayer with another half cent sales tax this fall? Thank you, unions. You're really helping out society. I yield back. Our next public commenter, Blair B., please go ahead. Hi, uh, Blair Beekman. Sorry about that. Uh, hi, thank you. Uh, happy 2024 to everyone. Uh, hope it can be a good meeting today and uh, the uh, upcoming meeting after this meeting also. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, thank yourselves for uh, the work that you do um, overall. Um, good luck what we can do. Good luck to the words of the uh, previous public comment about uh, allowing public comment time. And uh, I think you can do some, you have done some interesting good work. I thank you for that. And uh, good luck in, in us working together towards that, uh, towards the goal of just uh, public opinion can be an okay thing and a good thing. And then a thank you that uh, in your new uh, uh, security issues for public meetings, you're trying to take a soft approach, it looks like. Uh, good luck in us keeping up that good work. And uh, uh, I guess it's about all. Just a thank you uh, to Ideas Working Towards Peace. And open thank you, your time expired. Our final commenter will be the original draw. And just to state as well for the record that we will have Paul the Bold and phone number 731 as continued non-agenda comments at the end of the meeting. The original draw, please go ahead. I usually last. Anywho, um, hey, Nora, I thought you weren't gonna be here. Good to see you. Um, so yeah they're never going to give land back because what they're doing is taking people's land with you, even with your value capture and the San Diego region. So you can take advantage of increasing land values. So it's always going to be about the money. And that's the, the sad thing is that even with this blue transit oriented development that you're doing, you're going in to San Ysidro and putting um, densely populated um, 
you know, just building densely. And it's a bunch of pollution down there from Mexico, supposedly. It's just from Mexico. It doesn't come from anywhere but Mexico, um, according to this um, mobility working group. And um, we're going to build down there where there's pollution, which they were saying, we got to do something about the pollution. So let's build densely. It's just like the city of San Diego when they're like, this is a very high fire zone. Let's build very densely. It is so smart. You guys are really intelligent. It's um, incredible to just listen to the psychosis all of the time. And that concludes the non-agenda public comments at this time. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we have, do we have any uh, non-agenda member comments on this time, colleagues? No? All right. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and turn it over to Colleen for any updates on this uh, draft agendas for this week. We do not have any updates to the draft agendas. Okay, and then do you have any other updates or anything else? I apologize, Chairwoman, we do have some updates. Um, so the Office of the Independent Performance Auditor revised the annual audit plan, and that will be added to the 126 mm -hmm. agenda on consent. A closed session litigation item will be added to the 126 agenda. Um, the Otay Mesa East Toll Revenue Agreement consent item on the 126 agenda will be removed. And the San Diego double track consent item on the 126 agenda will be removed. Okay, thank you for that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to public comment on the consent agenda. I have three public commenters on the consent agenda. Mark, please come to the podium. Ah, one minute on so many items. So there's really not very much I could say in one minute. That's completely absurd. And uh, it is a pro, uh, prohibiting my speech on any item just from lack of time. So all I can say is that if anyone here and everyone here on the executive committee or the board should see Rosa Corey's videos by uh, Rosa Corey part one on YouTube, this whole organization is just part of a corporate oligarchy and uh, authoritarian corporate oligarchy. And it's doing UN agendas nobody wants, that even the far left Democrats would not like if they knew about it, restricting their driving. Um, so many things there isn't time to talk about. Now I have 13 seconds left. It, this is the fact that you guys would do this to the American public and, and let Nora and Elo limit our time to a minute is absurd. You should be ashamed. You, your time expired. Our next commenter, the original draw, and I currently have four commenters on this item. The original draw will be followed by Blair B. And the final commenter, Paul the Bold. The original draw, please go ahead. It's just, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see you want to cut down the time, but it just shows that what we are doing is working, which is holding you accountable and you don't like it. And so, as I told you at the Board of Supervisors, you guys will be the own uh, makers of your own demise. But you sit here and it's like, just when Mark was talking, I mean, do you have security standing right next to him? I mean, are you that worried about us? I mean, you have the sheriff come up around us and, you know, you will change your board policies here and bring in more security measures. But then when it comes to the Board of Supervisors, Nora, because, you know, you brought that uh, item before where it's saying that it's going to help people, more people come if you silence us. Um, but then Tara brings it forward and you, you don't want to do it because you said that it's already in the rules and, and your ability to do the things like cut down the time. So why would you even need to do it here? You know, it's like if you already have the authority to do it, why do you got it? You know, is it just to like try and intimidate the people? It's really sad because of all your double speak and you sit there and you say you want to hear from the people and then you silence them and you, you kick them out of meetings. So how is that? And your time expired. The next commenter, Blair B, will be followed by final commenter, Paul the Bold. Blair, go ahead. 
Hi, thank you, uh, Blair Beekman. Uh, I've noticed that on this month's agenda, this week's agenda, you only have two items so uh, for report. So it mean, it looks like you're trying to limit uh, how many items you have on the executive uh, committee uh, public meeting process. Maybe we can work out a process to allow one minute for, say, public comment and uh, uh, consent. And then for the agenda items, they can be related to consent calendar items and allow two minutes of public comment. And that way, you know, the public uh, can get a bit more of expanded time instead of having to hustle through. And because and, uh, I know you're on a, a time limit to get ready for the 10 o'clock meeting. So uh, good luck in ways to we can all work to uh, expand public comment as much as possible. And uh, maybe a minute 30 can be an option. Uh, and a thank you overall, just to uh, we can all consider openness and good practices. Uh, in the coming months with uh, issues of Israel. I think we are doing good work in that department as local communities. Keep up the good work. Our final commenter, Paul the Bold, please go ahead. You are self-muted. Hi, Paul the Bold. Uh, welcome clean. Um, I'm sorry for you that you have to pick up all the mess that the previous CEO left. Um, and as for public comments, I agree that there should be some time, some way to uh, maximize the public comments, you know, give us a minute or three minutes as I suggested to the board. Um, the Board of Supervisors, that is. And, uh, you know, um, I noticed that some of the board members seem to kind of ramble on and on. Maybe you should consider limiting their speaking time a bit. Anyway, um, I hope my comments are helpful. Thanks. And that concludes the public comments on the consent agenda. So uh, do any of my colleagues have any items that they'd like to pull on the consent agenda? Or is there- I move approval. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Oh, second, okay. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion on the consent item? Remember, we don't use it. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I got you. Do you have any comments? No. Okay, good. All right, we are good. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, please um, call the roll. I can just be unanimous, right? I can call the vote. I'll just do that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. That was easy. Okay, <laughs> and the next item on the agenda is item number four. Preliminary fiscal year 2025 program budget and strategic planning for framework. This is going to be extremely, extremely important. So I'm going to turn it over to our acting CEO and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Chairwoman. So we are kicking off the process right now to develop our fiscal year 25 budget. And Susan Huntington is our director of, of budget and programs. This um, fiscal year, as we're looking ahead, I think we've all seen the news about the state budget. So we're going into this in a very prudent fashion and really going to be focused and, and our approach is to really focus and execute. So with that, I'll turn it over to Susan and then Ray and I will both pro provide some additional information about what we're doing internally and how we see this externally working as well. Thanks, Susan. Colin. Thank you. So good morning, Chair Vargas and the rest of the executive committee. Happy New Year. I'm here with you this morning, like Colleen mentioned, to kick off our discussions on the development of the fiscal year 2025 program budget, which becomes effective on July 1st. Development of the fiscal year 25 program budget is underway. And as part of this process, staff considers Three things. One, the work elements related to meeting our federal, state, and local mandates. Two, the strategic direction of the agency, including progress on our internal initiatives and prioritized projects. And three, the current funding environment and economic outlook for the region, state, and nation. 
Today, we'll give you some preliminary information, which we're working with, which impacts our agency budget, as well as the timeline you should expect between now and May when we bring the final budget to the executive committee and to the board for consideration. The annual program budget really lays out the agency's work plan for the year ahead. So given this importance, Ray and Colleen will help to present this item. Ray will discuss the agency's strategic initiatives and Colleen will present on our priority projects. You'll remember back in May uh, 2023, the Board of Directors approved the final fiscal year 24 annual budget. The current year approved budget includes $1.2 billion in local, state, and federal funding for SANDAC activities, including roughly $566 million for capital project delivery and $237 million of transnet revenue, which is passed along as local system improvement and transit oper operation allocations. The approved fiscal year 24 multi-year capital budget is $9 billion. Then back in October, the board approved an amendment to the fiscal year 24 budget, adding more than adding $643 million more of state, federal, and transnet dollars uh, for our multi-year projects. Only 8 million was added into the current fiscal year, but that action set the priority for future years. So in terms of our mandates, um, the annual program budget reflects the projects, services, and activities that SANDAG completes to meet the agency's federal, state, and local mandates. So as um, the designation of the Metropolitan Planning Organization, we have um, several mandates related to that, and this is really where we're getting our federal dollars. We are also designated as uh, for the state as the San Diego Regional Consolidated Agency. Again, we have mandates that we need to make for that and um, activities that we have to complete in order to complete those mandates. And then for on the local side, we are designated as the San Diego County Regional Transportation Commission. And this is where our local dollars come from, as well as being the Council of Governments and the Consolidated Agency for the region. Throughout the year, the board sets directions, revises policies, and discusses priorities for allocating budget resources to these authorized activities. This slide shows just an example of some of the mandates. Um, the full list is in your packet as attachment one. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ray, who will discuss our agency's strategic initiatives. Thank you. We have several uh, internal initiatives that we're undertaking, and this is really to uh, make sure that the agency is in alignment with the new budget and with the new projects that we're bringing online. And so from an organizational structure, one of the things that we're looking at is really um, to streamline the work products and to really understand how we need to appropriately staff these different projects we're looking at and to make sure that we're doing the work that is important and then uh, the work that doesn't need to be done, um, you know, potentially pushing some of that off uh, for later. And so organizational structure is extremely important, especially when you change the program as much as we did with this, with this, this amendment. Um, in terms of technology, which is the second um, bullet point here, we are working hard to ensure that we have the, technolo the technology systems in-house that we need to uh, be an effective agency. In the last year, we implemented the ERP system. That was a two-year process. We delivered that on January 2nd um, successfully with the timeline that we had set out for ourselves. So that gives us a replacement product for 15 legacy systems that we had internally. But with that, we look forward to moving to a new office space where we need uh, new technology, and we're, we're looking at, at what that looks like to make sure everybody is working the most efficiently. And we're moving towards a paperless environment. And really what that means is, is having everything that we do somehow up uh, in a environment where we can get to it electronically. And that way, whether it's a public records request or it's, it's any other type of information, it's all available um, in, in one place. That is actually a really heavy lift and um, we are committed to doing that also. Uh, this also includes, for instance, the technology that we need to uh, put in place at the tolling operations to uh, f fix the situation that we have down there. In terms of communications, uh, Colleen and I are committed to communicating with the board in a, in a very clear and authentic manner to be completely transparent in what we're doing. And we're going to continue to do that throughout the year. In terms of recruitment and retention, 
we move forward to really attract and retain highly qualified uh, people. The, the job market has changed. Um, we've lost a lot of employees to uh, some of our member agencies, and um, we have a lot of people now that we need to train. So we've, we've hired professional trainers on staff also so that we can get up to speed with our internal processes and procedures. And most importantly, we're going to be working on succession planning also because we want to make sure that if, if we lose anybody who has a, a key set of knowledge, that we have somebody else who we can slip into that position. And that's something that that um, we really need here at the agency. And then in, in terms of processes, you know, a lot of the, the results that come out from the OIPA um, audits that we get are really process and, and policy changes that we need to do. And there are literally hundreds of them that we are working on to implement to make us a stronger agency and to make sure that um, we are we are complying with, with all of the, the laws and regulations and that we're doing things effectively. So we are going to continue to to do that going forward in the next year. Excellent. So now we'll turn it over to yes. Colleen to talk about our project highlights. Thank you, Susan. And so just looking at those strategic initiatives, I think what's really important is that that's what we laid out in the FY24 budget. So we're, we're really, that's a, a continuation of our commitment to what we're doing in terms of our organizational structure. We continue to refine that to best implement our projects and programs. The communication, continuing to make sure that you're updated on what the agency is working on, um, what we're doing in terms of technology. We just launched in the last month the first part of our ERP system to really bring everything now into one um, comprehensive system for finances. So these are continuations of, of what we want to see again in the next fiscal year. And that's true when it comes to the projects and programs. At this point, we are not proposing to initiate anything new. It's continuing what this board has already adopted in terms of our planning and programs with the FY24 budget. And then again, what was included in the budget amendment this fall. So it's continuing those projects, finishing what we've started, where we have projects ready to go, getting everything as close to construction and where we can, where the construction is funded, actually implementing those projects and programs. So our goal here is really to remain focused and then execute on the projects and programs. Thank you. So the final piece of the budget framework is the current funding environment and economic outlook for the region, state, and nation. In general, the budget has about 350 projects um, coming, and those projects are um, based on revenue coming from roughly 100 different funding sources. So the revenue which supports the projects in the agency budget is about a third comes from our local revenue, and about two-thirds is coming from our federal and state revenue. Local revenue is generated by Transnet, the half-cent sales tax. We also receive revenue generated based on the Transportation Development Act, or TDA. TDA has long been the cornerstone of transit funding. So the TDA funding allows each county to establish a quarter-cent sales tax to finance a variety of transportation projects, including transportation operations, bus and rail projects, and special transit services for um, disabled riders. Going into the 2025 budget, we are assuming revenue for these two sources will be flat. Um, however, uh, construction costs are still going up. So we're still in an inflationary period as it relates to construction costs and healthcare. Those th two things will impact the budget. So the revenue we have is flat, but it won't go as far as it went in prior years. The future forecasts are dynamic and our economists will continue to monitor economic conditions. We may need to revise our revenue estimates as more actual data is collected, but for now we're budgeting flat. As far as the toll road uh, collections, um, we know that these were very much impacted during COVID. I-15 revenues were down 80%, SR-125 over 50%. But the good news is that as of this year, we estimate that we will be back to pre-COVID levels. We are assuming modest growth in FY25. And lastly, our federal and state revenues are come from formula and discretionary grants. Our preliminary discussions with the feds and the state agencies indicate, again, that we should 
expect to budget flat. We shouldn't be expecting any additional funds. We did hear um, and got some details on the state budget where um, the governor is expecting a $38 billion shortfall. Um, and looking at some of the details in regards to that, there's a number of measures that the governor proposes. Um, and not all of that budget shortfall is coming from transportation. So we will be monitoring um, the governor's budget in terms of our state funding um, formula. When we brought the budget amendment back in October, we did indicate that those STIP funds, those state transportation improvement program formula funds were meant to be allocated and programmed from FY26 and beyond. So we are, um, we will be following what the California Transportation Commission does when they receive the packet of STIP um, programming um, in their meetings in the spring. So what they will be doing with our formula funds. So again, that would be something that we would have to bring back. But as of right now, we're going with what how they told us to program the funds and we're gonna wait and see what happens in the spring. So just real quickly to wrap up, um, this is our timeline. Uh, we're here today on this preliminary discussion. We'll be back with the draft budget in March to both this committee and the board of directors. Um, the draft budget, as you know, is gonna, going to include our overall work program, our capital, our ops and services, our admin and our board budgets. And then pending the board's approval in late March, the draft 25 budget will be distributed to our funding agencies, member agencies, and other interested parties for review and comment. We'll also post to our website for public comments and make presentations at various working groups, including the military working group, social equity working group, and the independent taxpayer oversight committee for review and input. During the month of April, we'll incorporate feedback on the draft and make refinements to cost and, re and revenue assumptions. And then we'll come back in May uh, to this executive committee and board for approval of the final proposed budget. So chair, that completes my presentation. I'd welcome any comments or questions. Thank you. Yeah. So we're gonna go to public comment right now, but I wanna make sure, and it's probably already embedded in your sort of process, but two things that are important to me and making sure that we know how much allocation is going to each of the cities and unincorporated areas as a result of SANDAG's advocacy and the work that we've been doing. I think that's very important to highlight that in the budget and really talk about how we're able to really support and supplement a lot of their work. And I know that you do a lot of work with their each individual city managers. I think that's important to really highlight. And the other part is I was um, at the White House yesterday talking to um, how we're gonna bring additional dollars for some of the big initiatives that we had. And they are really interested in doing additional, you know, really partnering up with us around the Inflation Reduction Act. I think there's, not I think, I know there's infrastructure funding in that particular item that I, I want to make sure that it's a top priority for us um, as we're moving forward and want to be very intentional about what that looks like. And so uh, whether that means that we bring somebody here from, um, you know, the administration to meet with our local cities, uh, really plan together as we're moving forward. I think we need to have a really robust and really sustained, like very, very, um, you know, strong advocacy piece for some of that funding uh, for some of the projects and initiatives that we have because I, there is money there and I don't want us, you know, to be the one region that doesn't get it. We are the second largest county in the state of California and we should be getting a lot of money from that fund, those funds. Um, and I think they, they're interested in, in partnering with, with us Excellent. on that. Thank you. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn it over to public comment and then I'm gonna ask uh, my colleagues for additional comments. Thank you, there are four public commenters on this item. Mark, please come to the podium. You will be followed by Paul the Bold, phone number 899 and the original draw. There are so many th things wrong with this. Uh, <laughs> first of all, uh, every project in California, it's already been stated by Business Insider on YouTube, uh, that the inflation, the delay and the inflation cost, it costs twice what it should by the time it's implemented. And that's not including the corruption and the whole fact that, that you're a corporation trying to make money off of us, the people. So it, it's not of and by and for the people at all. The whole idea of a toll road, 
if you can't see, if everybody sitting here that's our executive committee can't see how wrong it is that people are taxed for roads that they will have to pay a fee to use, then I suggest you let me put a meter in your driveway and pay me every time you want to park in your driveway at home because it's absolutely equivalent. It's absurd. It's, it's totalitarian, authoritarian. It's un-American. And you shouldn't be doing it. And I'm out of time. Thanks. Our next commenter, Paul the Bold, please go ahead. You are self mute. Um, a strategic initiative is to communicate to the board and public in a clear, authentic, timely, and transparent manner. You aren't doing it now. I suggest you increase public speaking time allow time for presentations and developed ideas from the public and stop communicating in bureaucraties. Usually by the time we have the bureaucraties figured out, the communication is no longer timely and therefore not transparent. Integrity is another initiative. Hope you walk the walk as well as talk the talk. And by the way, I heard that the state will have continuing $30 billion deficits over the next years. Please plan accordingly. And finally, I know you are planning the new office space. One minute time here is a turnoff. It is hardly worth coming, except for things like the egg salad sandwiches in the downstairs cafe, which I... Your time expired. Our next commenter, phone number 899, followed by the final commenter, the original draw. Phone number 899, please go ahead. Hi, Mary Davis. Uh, for something that is supposed to serve as an integral structural framework, this seems far more akin to aluminum than to steel. Attachment 2 was full of feel-good buzzwords that could almost pass for a John Lennon song, but light on core principles that actually serve and protect taxpayers. Glaringly absent from your documents is any mention of stewardship, which should be the driving force behind any governing body charged with collecting taxes and directing resources. This agency has repeatedly failed on stewardship, so you absolutely need to put that at the forefront of your mi mission. Quit defaulting to reaching into taxpayer wallets time and again. Stop treating us as a bottomless piggy bank and start using the dollars you do get far more prudently. Just like families do, tighten your own belt first. Ditch things like a $20,000 award ceremony, $67,000 for a board retreat, or providing catered lunches before coming to We the People for more money. Please add stewardship as a core pillar to your framework. Thank you. Our final commenter, the original draw, please go ahead. We really need to be mindful saying White House. That could be offensive potentially. Um, but who doesn't love money? It's so cool to spend it, right? And imagine having those billions of dollars that you could just, it would be like you could rake the, it's like leaves, right? And then you just go jump in the pile. That would be fun. Um, I mean, we might as well do that. But what I was thinking is like, since we're getting people into their 15 minute cities, we need to make it fun because, you know, we need to change their behaviors. If you make it fun, they won't even know that that's what we're doing, right? So as long as we have like, you know, an amusement park and different things, I mean, even I was thinking, you know, you don't even like you could take it away potentially, but the more you want to keep them in there, as long as you just keep them going around on roller coasters, right? And then we could have like moving sidewalks. That would be so much fun. Um, and maybe teacups. I don't know. Um, but then I also thought like with AI coming in, why don't we just bring in AI, in AI and then you guys don't even have to come in, right? And it's like, how cool would that be? And we just give universal basic income. Oh, that would be so cool, right? We just need to make things fun. And that concludes the public comments on this item. All right, so let me open it up for my colleagues uh, for comments. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chair, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Okay, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about this because this is the uh, program uh, budget framework. So I'd like to remind everyone when um, on this slide, talking specifically about funding estimates and local revenue, Transnet, uh, TDA, and then also toll road slash managed lanes. So the 125 specifically was um, a project that we purchased 
case you aren't all aware, um, I wanted to bring this up. Um, the 125 was a project that was built privately. We acquired it. Um, and then we have, I think it's like $180 million left roughly or somewhere in that neighborhood of, um, of debt that we need to continue to pay off for the purchase of that. Um, and, you know, I think it's important for us to remember that when we're talking about toll road and managed lanes, that one of the things or the funding strategies that we have in our uh, regional plan is conversion of those of, of many roads within the county, about 819 miles of them, whether they're local roads or highways. But those are roads that were built uh, to serve the communities, not as public projects, but as um, taxpayer funded already. So I guess my question, or I guess maybe it's not even a question, but I think that we need to have a, a discussion amongst the board publicly about our core principles. And one of those principles, whether we are actually in support of conversions. I, I literally have spoken about this so many times on all of our little, um, I, w I don't want to call them charrettes, but potentially charrettes that we were doing uh, during the uh, creation of the uh, region, the new regional plan moving forward. I think that we need to get a sense of where everyone really is at on this. Is this something that we can all support? Is this something that we are okay with? Because I I, I, I personally am not, and I don't know really how the, the other board members feel. And then specifically about the uh, toll roads, because I've I've noticed this a lot lately, is that we have, um, you know, the, the numbers are changing. Do we currently have a ceiling on what those tolls can, we can charge people? So Mary Jones, when we took over the facility in 2011, we actually reduced tolls by 25 to 40%, depending on what segments you're driving. Uh, since then, we have not had any increases in tolls, not even inflation adjusted. So really, that's board-driven. We'd have to come to the board if we wanted to raise tolls at all, but we haven't since we took over the facility. In fact, we've reduced them. Well, I'm talking about tolls in general. So I know for a fact that on the 15, that those numbers are significantly higher than originally they were. And, you know, we do have a discussion on the actual board agenda today, board of directors, about the 125 um, and ETAN and then HNTB. And just to be clear, ETAN is currently, um, and, and HNTB is managing the, the 15 also, correct? That's correct. Okay, so how are those numbers being generated? And are you telling me that that on the 15, those, those have not been adjusted? The 15 also, um, it's a managed lane that we have, and we have not increased tolls since uh, inception, actually. So Even I've never seen $8, but I've been seeing it recently. So is it possible to get a historical, this is what we've charged, showing us that? Because I don't recall ever seeing $8 in the past, but I definitely see it quite a, quite a lot now. So um, is it during certain um, amounts of traffic? I, I don't know. I, I would love to get an update on that. So if we could get a, a history of that, um, that would be uh, great. And then also, um, okay, so you're saying that it would have to come back to the board and we're the ones that set the ceiling on that? Correct. And so what is our current ceiling for the 125 and the 15? Do we do we know? And when do we vote on that? Because I was actually filling in uh, for Jim Desmond when we were originally talking about, um, because I was vice mayor, I wasn't mayor then, um, back in 2011 when we, or actually before we acquired it, so it must have been 2010. Um, and I don't think anyone else, well, I think Lisa was. Um, anyway, I, many of the board members were not here. So if, if, we, if we could find out when that was set, when we approved that, because I certainly couldn't tell you, I don't, I don't remember that. Um, and I'll also, um, I, I already uh, talked about the management, so that's actually covered. Sorry, I have a couple of questions. Oh, and then uh, just one thing about, I wanna go back to the conversion. So thank you, Andre. I don't think I have any further uh, questions that you might be involved in. But you know, thinking back to the conversions and uh, what we've done with the, um, the recent budget adjustment where we prioritize projects that were not originally part of the um, 21 specific plan to be prioritized over projects that we promised voters in the 2004 Transnet, um, I think 
that that discussion, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I would like to have that agendized for a future agenda where we talk about all of the board talking about are we good with converting current lanes, whether they're local or highways, into a, a toll road um, that are that are not currently a toll road. Because you know when uh, we talk about and you know I was at a Caltrans meeting and I know Antoinette was there and I asked this question. I said. So what's going on with the 78? Because I've heard a lot of different things. I've asked uh, specific direct questions, never really felt like I got an answer. There are currently six lanes uh, there and uh, we are, and, and in 2004, the transnet was to pay for two HOV lanes, not managed lanes, but HOV lanes. And what I was told at that meeting was there were going to be two toll, uh, toll lanes each way. I'm sorry, not toll, managed. I have to get my um, my, words straight, um, two managed lanes each way. So that would be a net loss of general purpose lanes of one lane each way, which we're already feeling the squeeze on the 78. So um, I, I just want to have this discussion and agendize this for um, a, one, like hopefully, uh, you know, no later than March. Uh, but I think it's really important that we have this discussion with all the board uh, present discussing what our feelings are on this and actually take a vote because I think that until we decide that we're really at a disadvantage of creating that 20 uh, of the update of the 21 plan. Reach yeah. plan. So I, I'm going to turn over to Colleen in a second, but I, I want to make sure that as we're having these conversations that we're going to have a bigger conversation about our revenue workshop. Um, I think it's also important to know, because we keep going back to the, um, you know, the, the voters initiatives. And so I want to make sure that in that discussion that when we do have it, that it's clear sort of what other mandates have come down and why we are where we're at. Because I think we keep using language as to, um, you know, how some of these things have changed and what some of our parameters are based on, um, you know, state legislature, legislation and or any other um, items that might have influenced where we are, you know, whether it's so that it's not so that it's clear, I think, for not only the public, but also for those members that are new, um, that it, it is not a decision that SANDAG made because they decided this is what they want to do, but it's a decision that has been made based on uh, current mandates as well. So I want to make sure that that's included in that process so that everybody's on the same level playing field as we're moving forward. So happy to figure out where in the in the agenda, but if, I think Colleen has some yes, recommendations. Well, I have some really good news for you that we actually have the proposed report and the primary item for the January 26th board meeting is the regional plan initial concept cost and revenues workshop. So this is where we're actually going to lay out what we believe is the best transportation network for the region based on all the input we've heard from you all based on current laws and you get to have that discussion. So I welcome and you know encourage all of you to come with your ideas and we want your input so that we know exactly how to move forward. So that's where we will have that discussion and yeah, happy and to know that you're geared up and ready. Yeah, and, <clears> and I do like that we are having a workshop though in a workshop, we're not actually taking a vote. We are, we're putting little post-its on things saying, yes, I agree with this or no, I don't agree with this. But at the end of the day, we're not actually taking a vote. And you know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up chair um, the funding and uh, the, the uh, citizens initiative, because I know we're all aware that there is now a, um, a, a an initiative, a citizens initiative that is um, uh, coming up on this year's uh, a ballot in November. And that is significant because it's a half cent sales tax that is put on by a citizens initiative. But also, as we discussed a little bit earlier, one of the the people that have been managing our 125, um, our our management company, that we literally it was brought out last year that we have 1.8 million dollars in lost revenue when they had uh, the the infrastructure disconnected um, to pay for the bonds, and and so now we're talking about they've actually paid to uh, uh, this 
to get something on the ballot for a long-term revenue source, and we already know that they failed. So I think, you know, moving forward, too, we need to be very careful in our vendor selection and making sure that we are not uh, hiring vendors or continuing with vendors that we know are failing us, uh, that have missed deadlines. And again, you know, at least $1.8 million, who knows what that number is going to be at the end of the day, how much we've lost. But anyway, I think, you know, and then continuing to, um, you know, support things where, um, and I don't know if anyone on the board has actually, oh, I'm sorry, I think you did, Chair Vargas, um, uh, uh, support and endorse the Let's Go San Diego um, ballot initiative as um, as something that you do support, which is, again, you know, not Sandag managing it, but it's an outside entity managing it when it's not a, when for our plan. So that doesn't actually make sense to me. Anyway, I think it's important that we, you know, continue having these discussions. And yes, a workshop is good. However, at the end of the day, I think we really do need to take an actual vote. Um, yeah. So, so that the, the reason for the workshops is because I want, you know, what I heard loud and clear last year was that the, my colleagues wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to really have thorough discussion uh, on each of these items. So, um, of course, we can have an action item as well, but I do believe that the model of the workshops has really helped people to really take deeper dives into some of these issues and spend the time that we need. Unfortunately, some folks don't end up staying for the workshops, which is the bad part of this, but I do believe that um, it's a good first step. And then if the recommendation from the board is to move forward with an agenda item, happy to do that. Okay, um, so I, and I agree with uh, that. So I would say as an executive board member, I definitely want to have the workshop. And then I think at the following meeting uh, at the board of directors, we should uh, make it an action item to have the discussion and then take action on that as well. So thank you for your indulgence, Chair. Councilman. Uh, Chair, I realize we're running out of time. We have another item on the agenda. So I hope in the future we can keep our discussion to the agendized item itself and not and find tangents to go on. I, I do agree with uh, 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 Mayor Jones in that we do need a, a top level discussion about funding. Should users of our road system uh, pay for the primary cost? Should they pay for the secondary cost, which is the injury that they cause uh, by polluting the, our air? Those are some basic level questions that we should be asking, and I hope we do have that discussion in the future. I do have a quick comment, um, but it doesn't really require a response, and that as we look at our, our budget uh, for, for next year, I hope we protect the innovative projects and ideas that are coming from our regional plan, and that those pilot programs are going to be funded, that we fight for them to be funded and 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 then we'll complete them because they're so important towards uh, innovation, improving our transportation system and, and making things work for the future. So that's my just my comment uh, that we that we look after. We protect those funds and not just the big, huge uh, um, um, capital projects. Thank you. Just real briefly because we're running out of time, but um, following on uh, to the comments that were just made, can we look at slide five for one second? Uh, on slide five at the top there is the um, what are the sh mobility shuttles, and I know that a lot of the mobility shuttles in the different um, jurisdictions that actually have them, such as the Beach Bug, included pilot funding, to my knowledge, from Sandag, and my and I'd like more information about that or have that be part of our discussions in the future because my understanding is there is no more funding for cities that want to do pilot programs such as coronado which is trying to uh, implement their program over the, in the next few months and this last uh holiday season was probably the hardest time in coronado's history to find parking within you know 10 blocks of things and um we're trying to get this off the ground and i'm worried that because i believe it's been a very successful program in other cities that if it was a pilot program is there going to be funding for those pilot programs to be ongoing programs? I know that it has to transition to certain points, and um, but again, they're not the most expensive programs in the world, and they are effective. And um, in regard to one of the chair's comments, I agree with, I really appreciate any information, uh, additional information on where, where money is being spent geographically, because I believe when you presented uh, to this, uh, to the board in regard to the budget amendment, I, I brought up that uh, according to the original budget, 
and then the overlay of all the additional funding, I couldn't find any projects on either of those maps where $1 was being spent in Coronado or being spent in Imperial Beach. Um, and also, as I mentioned, I believe at that meeting, that Coronado has hundreds of thousands of vehicles that traverse through it and then traverse through Imperial Beach one way or the other during the day, primarily just as a transportation corridor, uh, the vast majority of it. And so, um, helping to focus on that and solve that problem for what I think is a relatively small amount of money in our budget and ensure that all the cities are included would be wonderful. So I don't need a big response. I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just want to make sure that doesn't get lost, even though it's a introductory topic today. Excellent. Well, I did want to follow up that part of the budget amendment in October was to add $5 million for the Flexible Fleets program. So th that bucket was kind of uh, added to through that action. So we will be rolling out additional pilots. And okay, that no, money so that's, will be in the budget in FY25 budget. So that's for additional pilots or is that from a mix of the yeah. current pilot programs? No, it's, a, it's additional projects, uh, additional pilots. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for the information. Yep. All right. Uh, any additional comments, colleagues? No? All right. Seeing that none, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, now go to the next item, which is a legislative status update. So go ahead, Colleen. Yes. So um, in the interest of time, this is an information item. The primary report that we're going to provide to you had to do with the state budget, which Susan covered at the beginning of her presentation. So um, I can recommend that you take a look at the written reports as the documentation, and you can set, accept that as information in lieu of a, a staff report today. Thank you. Let me go ahead and turn it over to public comment. I've got seven, eight public commenters on this item. Mark, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Truth. I didn't have time to research this enough to to speak as well as I would like on it. I can say that everything you're legislating is definitely promoting UN Agenda 21 goals. Uh, none of the American people know about it, um, or very, very few. And it's not all right. Um, you technically are an authoritarian corporate oligarchy which the only difference between you and a dictatorship is a small corporate group is authoritarian and does things against the people's will that they don't like. And uh, it's, it's so obvious. You never, of course, it's not within your authority to stop inflation, but you should be educating the people that you can't solve the problems you're trying to address without stopping it. And uh, that's your moral obligation and duty. Uh, by the way, about being illegal, uh, there are a lot of things that are totally wrong that are not illegal. It wasn't illegal for the Japanese to be imprisoned in our country or the Nazis to imprison the Jews. The, Your it, time has expired. Our next commenter, Truth, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Consuelo and then Alan C. The federal government is giving trillions to two socialist countries, Ukraine and Israel. Forget us. Ukraine still honors Nazi collaborator Stefan Bandera, who was responsible for massacres of Polish people and the Holocaust of Jews in Ukraine, with statues, street names, and awards as recently as 2018. There's also Nazi groups like the OUN, the UPA, Right Sector, Azov Battalion, and the Svoboda Party. And Israel being the country that bulldozed 23-year-old American Rachel Corey to death in 2003. And Israel also killed our Amer American sailors without mercy by blowing up the USS Liberty in order to pull us into their war back in 1967. Nothing's changed. And as far as border asylum, undocumented migrant, illegal immigration, you want to talk about disruptions, there's a major one Just to intentionally uh, destabilize our country. This is the item related to the legislation. So can you I focus on that, I am talking about please? what is being legislated. Did you read it? I did, but that is not in the comments. So that's why I just want to make sure you keep on track, please. There is money for illegal immigration. You can call it whatever you want. And who cares about homeless Americans when there's tax Thank money? You. Your time did expire. Thank you for that. Our Laura. next commenter, Consuelo, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by Ellen C. and then the original draw.
Aside from uh, the new Renacops in the house, the table here where the podium used to be speaks volumes of what you feel about public input. The circle that was once open is now closed with the people's podium pushed way back. You might as well have put it near the elevators. Consuelo, just a reminder, I'm the item topic, before I'm you done. the legislative status report, I'm gonna ask you all to please stay on topic. We have a full agenda today. Go ahead. Our next commenter, Ellen C. Excuse me. Go ahead. Ellen C, please come to the podium. You'll be followed by the original draw, then Paul the Bold and Blair Beekman. Hello, I'm reading over this, uh, the funding. We got $729 million to Virginia Railroad. We got $27 million to, I can't, don't even, doesn't say what state. What about the $4 million that Del Mar uh, was asking for to move the, our railroad tracks. And also thank you earlier, Mayor Jones, for what you pointed out about the waste on 125. But back then, Mayor Todd Glory was the chair. He gave me time and I pointed that out. And within a week later, the governor set aside $4 million. Where did that money go? Terry, you put out a proposition about having that track instead of wasting money through a tunnel, have it go next to the, instead of going through the, uh, through the horse track, have it go next to the Del Mar Fairgrounds, cost saving, faster get done. So your safety for the pastures, better for the community and safety and savings money for the taxpayer. Why don't you push that? Put that on the agenda, make that happen now. You've seen the pilings, you've seen the disasters down there. You're just asking for 50 people to get killed. That train falls into the river or to the ocean. Your time expired. I yield back again. Our next commenter, the original draw, please go ahead. Anything that you guys are legislating for or doing whatever and, and using money for is fraud, waste, and abuse because it is never going to the things that the people want. It is all for these globalist elites who sit here and you go and may have meetings with them and then they get to determine what happens in our own communities. And it's sad because this is the people's money that is from here and we should be the ones determining where it goes. But if we were the ones to determine where it goes, your whole plan would fall flat and you wouldn't be able to do all of the things that you're doing, which is basically using our own money to enslave us. And at some point, you're going to feel that too, because you're not going to be, you know, outside of this when the elites come down on you. They're just using you guys as puppets to do the bidding of them. So at some point, you know, hopefully you can turn away from this because... You know, you're enslaving yourself at the same time that you are enslaving the people. And I guarantee you, you're going to be able to want to walk out of that prison cell and not have that door shut, slammed right in your face. Your time expired. Our next commenter, Paul the Bold, will be followed by Blair B, the final commenter. Paul the Bold, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, reading this, you know, it... It is nice to know what the state and federal governments are doing, but a lot of this could simply be printed and distributed. I do not know how many state contracts uh, people will actually memorize here, new, new state contacts, I mean. Um, I don't know how many they'll actually memorize at this uh, place right in this meeting. And honestly, I'm not sure how germane to send egg the federal bill count or House Speaker Mike Johnson's potential game of chicken is. Um, to me, a better approach would be to include a summary of county and local legislative status, key people and local requests, needs, or actions. But I mean, Sandag is back. Your time expired. Our final commenter, Blair B. Please go ahead. Hi, there's been talk today of, of working with state and federal agencies. Uh, thank you for that. Um, with the war going on in Israel, uh, and between Israel and Palestinian groups at this time, uh, thank you for the work that we can be doing uh, here uh, towards openness. Uh, the border issues, uh, it could be pretty dicey at the, at, in that area at this time. And it, it, as always, I like to say the good relationships that you're developing with Sandag 
uh, just create a, a natural sense of dialogue and peace, basically, to work on our issues. And I thank you immensely for that. So again, a good luck towards the ideas of openness uh, at this time as, as local communities can work. If you work towards openness uh, and clarity, that brings peace and dialogue, basically, and that's the good stuff. And that brings what we should be doing and gives good examples to the world, which is what Sandag is doing really well. Uh, good luck in continuing these good examples uh, in the item you're going to talk about coming up. Thanks. And that concludes the public comments on this item. All right. So with that. Um... And Chairwoman, as a reminder, we have two continued non-agenda public comments we need to take before we adjourn. Okay, go ahead. The two non-agendas that were continued from the beginning of the meeting, Paul the Bold and phone number 731. If you'd still like to speak, please raise your hand now. Phone number 731, please go ahead. You are self-muted. Here I am, right here. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Jack. Were you what? suggesting that Rebecca rambles on? Because I'm gonna argue she doesn't get enough time and neither do I. And nor I did not appreciate that blatant disrespect because that's what that was. And I got something for you right here, just a second. Let's see if it'll play, because I'm not actually sure if it will while I'm actually on the phone. Uh, let's see, this is difficult. Uh, did I even download it? Maybe not, maybe I didn't download it, uh-oh. Doesn't matter about my time because I don't have anything planned to say. But see, I, I'm, I'm an expert on radio. I know not to leave uh, dead air time. Let's try this. Oh, I can't. What if I hang up the phone? Will the mic still work, do you think? Or will I lose my time? You want to find out? Yes. Okay, hold on. Absolutely not. Not under my fucking watch. No. That's the behavior we deal with, and you're proving everyone right. Congratulations. Our final non-agenda public commenter, Paul the Bold, please go ahead. Thank you. I agree with Mayor Bill Wells and others that we need an independent investigation of Sendag's financial and political scandals. Financial scandals like the misuse of toll funds, even paying the Golden Gate Bridge people, not using funds in a timely manner, improper contracts and bonuses, and on and on. Why so many? Then you have Sendag employees improperly pressuring board members, and does this extend to gaming public at workshops with pre-selected information and limited public response? And here people are furious at having one-minute speeches if they can speak at all before the closed session. A lot of questions in the wake of the corrupt previous CEO's departure. As I say, you should listen be patient with us and honored to have our all of our free advice. Thank you. And that concludes the continued non-agenda public comments. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our meeting and we're gonna have our next meeting, uh, executive committee meeting on Friday, February 9th at 9 a.m. And uh, we will go ahead and start our regular standard meeting at 10, 10, 15.